People say to me, oh, you're, you're, you're so tough what you do. You come in in the morning, your hair, do your makeup, give you breakfast, make you comfortable. They, they're very obsequious. And so Welcome back, viewers, to our channel where we delve into the lives and legacies of remarkable individuals. Today, our hearts are heavy as we commemorate the life of an extraordinary talent, the late David McCallum, known for his iconic role as Donald Ducky Mallard on the hit television show NCIS, McCallum's passing left a void felt by millions worldwide. In this episode, we explore the last words shared by this beloved actor before he departed from this world, reflecting on his remarkable career and the impact he left behind. In his final interview conducted just weeks before his passing, David McCallum shared profound thoughts on life, perhaps hinting at the wisdom he had gained over his many years in the industry. With his signature eloquence and calm demeanor, McCallum expressed, Life is like a tapestry, intertwining threads of joy and sorrow, love and loss. We must embrace all the colors and textures, for it is in the contrast that we truly find meaning. It is undeniable that NCIS and McCallum's portrayal of Ducky Mallard played a significant role in defining his career. With the character known for his wit, integrity, and unwavering loyalty to his team, fans were drawn to the magnetic presence McCallum brought to Ducky. In his final message to the NCIS fan community, he humbly stated, Ducky became a beloved character because of the outstanding writing and the remarkable team that brought him to life on screen. It was truly an honor. David McCallum's final words were filled with gratitude and love for the people who supported him throughout his journey. Addressing his family, friends, and fans, he shared, To my incredible family, thank you for being the foundation upon which I built my dreams. Your unwavering support and love carried me through the highs and lows. To my loyal viewers and fans, thank you for your unwavering dedication. Your enthusiasm was always my motivation, and your kind words brought endless joy to my heart. As we bid farewell to a true legend, it is important to recognize that David McCallum's legacy lives on. The imprints he left on the entertainment industry and in the hearts of his fans will forever be cherished. His final words remind us to embrace the tapestry of life, finding beauty in its contrasting hues. David McCallum, the Scottish-born actor who became a surprise sensation as the enigmatic Russian spy Ilya Kuryakin on The Man from Uncle in the 1960s, and found television stardom again almost 40 years later on the hit series NCIS, died on Monday in New York. He was 90. NCIS announced his death in a post on X, the social media platform formerly known as Twitter. The announcement did not include any further information. Trained at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London, Mr. McCallum was an experienced character actor who could use an accent or an odd piece of clothing to give depth to a role. He played a wide range of parts across theater, film, and television, from Shakespeare's Julius Caesar in Central Park in 2000 to the voice of Professor Paradox on the animated television series Ben 10 Ultimate Alien a decade later. He was hired in 1964 to play Ilya Kuryakin, the Russian-accented sidekick of Robert Vaughn's Napoleon Solo on The Man from UNCLE, a tongue-in-cheek series about secret agents working for the fictional United Network Command for Law and Enforcement. His part was meant to be small. He had just four lines in the first episode. He suggested that Ilya be made more interesting by having him be close-mouthed about his personal life. Nobody knows what Ilya Kuryakin does when he goes home at night, he told one interviewer, and somewhat antagonistic to Solo. The writers began to build up his character and he became a fixture of the series and a two-time Emmy Award nominee. Somewhat to his annoyance, he also became a sex symbol. With his mysterious air, his beetle haircut, and his trademark black turtleneck, Mr. McCallum was a magnet for teenage fans. Sent on a publicity junket for the show to Louisiana State University at Baton Rouge in 1965, he was mobbed by screaming female students and had to be rescued by police officers. McCallum's motorcades are now, by order of the police chiefs of the cities he visits, forbidden to stop anywhere along the line of drive, the New York Times reported in a 1965 profile. If the entourage slowed, there would be carnage in the streets. The man from Uncle ended in 1968, and Mr. McCallum retreated happily to lower profile roles. He continued to work steadily, mostly in B-movies and in supporting parts on television. 
He also played the title role in the short-lived series The Invisible Man from 1975 to 1976 and Emperor Joseph II in a revival of Amadeus on Broadway in 1999. But everywhere he went, he said the Russian secret agent stalked him. It's been 30 years, but I can't escape him, he told the Times in 1998. Ilya Kuryakin is there 24 hours a day. In 2003, the Russian shadow finally met his match in the bow-tied, bespectacled, and eccentric medical examiner Donald Mallard, better known as Ducky, on the hit CBS crime series NCIS. He remained with the show, which consistently ranked in the Nielsen top 10 for two decades. He was still a member of the cast at his death. In interviews, Mr. McCallum said that besides Julius Caesar, Mr. Mallard was his favorite role, in part because it taught him so much about forensics. He studied with pathologists in Los Angeles and even sat in autopsies, learning enough that the show's writers would ask him for technical advice. David Keith McCallum Jr. was born on September 19, 1933 into a musical family in Glasgow. His father was the first violinist for the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in London. His mother, Dorothy Dorman, was a cellist. He would later tell interviewers that his Scotch Presbyterian upbringing had left him emotionally circumscribed. We Scots, we tend to be awfully tight inside, he told TV Guide in 1965. It has hurt me as an actor to be so, so naturally restricted. Expected to follow in the family footsteps and pursue a career in music, he enrolled in the Royal Academy of Music to study oboe. But he found himself drawn to acting and switched to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. He never completely lost interest in music, however. At the height of his uncle fame, Capitol Records released several albums under his name on which he conducted instrumental renditions of pop hits. Mr. McCallum was drafted into the British military in 1951 and served two years, including 10 months in what is now Ghana as a small arms expert. Not long after his discharge, he signed with the Rank Organization, a British production company, and began acting both in movies and on television. He met Jill Ireland, already a rising actress in Britain, when they were both cast in the Rank production Robbery Under Arms in 1957. He proposed seven days after they met, and they married that spring. In 1961, when he was cast as Judas Iscariot in The Greatest Story Ever Told, which would not be completed and released until 1965, the couple moved to Los Angeles. They appeared to flourish. They had three children. She became a busy TV actress and made several guest appearances on The Man From U.N.C.L.E., playing three different characters. But the strain of Mr. McCallum's stardom took a toll on their marriage, and she left him for the actor Charles Bronson, whom she'd met when Mr. McCallum and Mr. Bronson were both filming The Great Escape, 1963. Less than a year after their divorce in 1967, Mr. McCallum married Catherine Carpenter, a model. She survives him. Further information about his survivors was not immediately available. Mr. McCallum and his wife lived in Manhattan. The Associated Press said that CBS said he died at a Manhattan hospital but did not explain why he'd been hospitalized. When NCIS made Mr. McCallum a television star for the second time, he found fame much less oppressive than he had the first time. In New York, now I leave 15 minutes because I walk everywhere in New York, between appointments because I'm going to be stopped on the street to talk about NCIS for at least about 15 minutes, he told BBC Radio in 2009. I love it, he said, when asked if he ever grew tired of that kind of attention. I've never got fed up with anything in my whole life. Join us next time as we continue our journey, celebrating the lives and legacies of those who'd left an indelible mark on our world. Remember, as David McCallum once said, life is a gift that should be cherished. Never take a single moment for granted. Until then, stay inspired, stay curious, and keep celebrating the extraordinary.